Today the great property shrinkflation. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics, one that is posts covering finance and problem news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Well, if you've been down to the shops recently, you'll see that one of the things the supermarkets are doing are essentially reducing the pack size. So, for example, my favourite pack of biscuits went from 375 grams to 280 grams just last week. So the same price, of course, but we're just buying less. And the same is true of property. According to recent data that the ABS just released, it's an interesting series of data relating to the floor area and site areas of new private sector houses approved in Australia's five largest capital cities across a 10 year period from 2012 to 2021. Now, it is worth highlighting that building approvals with either no floor area or no site area were excluded from the analysis. And that means that a range of exclusions there with floor areas less than 100 square metres or greater than 750 square metres, site areas less than 200 square metres or greater than 1,000 square metres, and houses with an approval value under $100,000 or approvals consisting of more than one house Houses where the approval value per square metre is unrealistic, most likely because the floor area provided on the building approval record was inaccurate. And by the way, they also didn't cover Hobart, Darwin and the ACT because of data missing and large variability in average floor area and site areas. So there is some question here about the data, but they're looking at houses. And they conclude that Australians are building houses on smaller blocks. The average site area of a new home approval decreased considerably over the last 10 years. It's down by 64 square metres, or down 13%, while the average floor area decreased by only 3 square metres, down 1%. So in other words, we've got smaller plots, but we're building still very big properties. Some of the states shown some stabilisation in the decrease in average site area over the last couple of years, and that's partly due to some changes in planning regs, I think. The average site area for new houses in Australian capital cities decreased by that 13%, 64 square metres, over the last 10 years from 496 square metres in 2012 to 432 square metres in 2021. Over the five largest states, average site areas for house approvals trended downward in all capital cities over the past 10 years, resulting in increased housing density across the capitals. Greater Brisbane decreased the most by 112 square metres, or down 20%, from 571 square metres in 2012 to 459 square metres in 2021. Greater Adelaide decreased the least down 6% by 30 square metres from 498 square metres to 468 square metres over 10 years. And Greater Perth have the smallest average site areas for the capital cities across the 10-year period, while either Greater Adelaide or Greater Brisbane have the largest for nine of the 10 years, except in 2015, when Greater Melbourne had the largest average site area. The greater capital city areas of Sydney and Brisbane reached average site areas of less than 500 square metres for new houses by 2014, after which site areas trended lower through to 2019 in these cities before showing some signs of stability. And based on 2021 results, there is evidence that the downtrend in average site area in the COVID pandemic era approvals has slowed. Between 2019 and 21, the average site area in Greater Melbourne and Greater Perth continue to fall down 4% and 1% respectively, while Greater Sydney and Greater Adelaide saw rises over the same period at 2%, and in Greater Brisbane the average site area was unchanged from 2019 to 2021 at 241 square metres. While the average site area of new home approvals decreased considerably over the last 10 years, the average floor area of new houses approved in Australian capital cities showed less overall change, but greater volatility over the 10-year period. In 2012, the average floor area was 245 square metres, and in 2021, the average was 242 square metres. That's a decrease of 3 square metres, down 1% over 10 years. 
The combined trend of smaller site areas and larger unchanged floor areas of house approvals over time shows that Australians are building similar size houses with smaller yards. And the ratio of floor to site area increased between 2012 and 2021 from 0.49 to 0.56, driven by greater densification. This reflects a combination of factors including increases in land costs, a greater proportion of new houses being constructed in urban infill locations, and more two-storey houses that maximise living space on smaller lots. Greater Sydney was the capital city with the largest average floor area for newly approved houses throughout most of the 10-year period, declining slowly from 271 to 254 square metres, while Greater Adelaide generally had the smallest, growing slowly from 209 to 220 square metres, and Greater Melbourne had the largest average floor area for newly approved houses in 2019 and 2020. In the last two years, Greater Perth have the smallest average house sizes of 215 and 214 square metres respectively. And the greater capital cities of Brisbane was up 5% and Adelaide up 5%. Both increased the average floor areas from 2012 to 2021, while Greater Sydney and Greater Perth both decreased at the same rate, down 7% over the period. Greater Melbourne average floor areas were stable, with results of 247 in both 2012 and 2021, ranging from 244 to 259 square metres over 10 years. So the point to make here is that we are spending more money to buy smaller properties on lots that are actually shrinking very fast. And that, of course, is directly as a result of planning changes, subdivisions and higher density property question of course is that a good thing uh, i'm not sure it is actually looking at uh, some of those new developed suburbs and also looking at some of the redeveloped suburbs closer into the center of our cities where frankly the character has been completely devalued and denuded but there again the commercial realities of wanting to build more and build it cheap and the developers wanting to put multiple units on a single lot is driving a lot of this behaviour. The question, of course, will be whether the slowdown that we've seen due to COVID is temporary or whether it marks a change in direction. We'll see. Now, if you're buying your home in Sydney's contentious market, you don't need to stand alone. This is the time you need to have Edwin Almeida from Ribbon Property Consultant standing alongside you. Buying a property is both challenging and adversarial. The vendor has a professional on their side. Emotions run high, price discovery and price transparency are hard to find, and then there's the wasted time and financial investments that you make. Edwin understands your needs, so why not engage a licensed professional to stand alongside you? With RPC, you know you have experience, knowledge and master negotiators looking after your best interests. So shoot Ribbon an email at info at ribbonproperty.com.au and if you use the promo code DFAWTW slash Martin, you can get a 10% discount offer. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.